सो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू योर पीडिया एजुकेशन सो दिस वीडियो इज रिलेटेड टू सी जी पी डी टी एम यू नो दे हैव यू नो एडवर्टाइज वन नोटिफिकेशन रिलेटेड टू रिक्रूटमेंट ऑफ एग्जामिनर ऑफ डिजाइन एंड पेटेंट ग्रुप ए गैजेटेड ऑफिसर पोजिशन सो इन दैट दे आर गोइंग टू कंडक्ट एग्जाम इन टू स्टेजेस एंड सेकेंड स्टेज विल बी योर मैन स्टेज और डिस्क्रिप्टिव स्टेज सो इन दैट स्टेज दे विल बी टेस्टिंग योर कोर इंजीनियरिंग नॉलेज सो इफ यू आर कमिंग फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग सो एनालॉग इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इज वन ऑफ द टॉपिक देयर एंड गाइज इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद यू फ्यू क्वेश्चन विच यू नीड टू प्रिपेयर और विच यू नीड टू प्रैक्टिस एंड आई हैव ऑब्जॉर्व द पास्ट टू पेपर्स द क्वेश्चन वर अराउंड द सेम फेरेफेरी सी वाई आई सिलेक्ट दीज क्वेश्चन ऑनली द वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग इज they have been taken from the standard author book and there are very good question and second while solving these question you will seem like that it's a kind of revision of entire analog electronics topic related to that questions see there is a golden rule of analog electronics which says you have bjt you have mosfet you have operational amplifier you have diode you have the zener diode you know they operate in the multiple region so when you are solving any of the analog problem then obviously in the very first grow it's very difficult to tell which relation which current voltage equation you need to use and of which religion or which region you need to use so there comes the golden rule of analog electronics start your process with the assumption and then under that assumption make some verification whatever result you are getting verify with those node voltages and current that whatever assumption you did whether that assumption is correct or whether that is false if that assumption is correct it means whatever state you assumed that is the correct operating reason of that analog device and your answers are the correct answer if your assumption is wrong then obviously you need to switch for the next stage so that's why i have selected this question only if you see the very first question is related to the diode in this question you need to tell the find the voltage and current in the figure and assuming the diodes are idle as you know there are multiple model of the diode there is small signal model of the diode there is linear model of the diode there is constant voltage drop model of the diode there is idle model of the diode right so in question it will be specifically mentioned which model of the diode you need to use and you can see there two diode are mentioned in both question but it's not very clear nobody can tell directly by looking at them which will be on or which will be off it means you need to start your assumption and you need to solve under that assumption so guys while solving these numerical you need to put your network analysis tool and concept of the diode so once you practice these two question trust me you will get a very good hold over how to solve the numerical of the diode next i'm coming down this is a question basically related to mos so this question include the entire theory or journey of the mosfet see it's mentioned there uh, oxide layer thickness is mentioned mobility is mentioned threshold voltage is mentioned they are asking for a mosfet with w by l ratio aspect ratio calculate the value of overdrive voltage gate to source voltage and vds minimum needed to operate the transistor in the saturation region with current 100 micro ampere means you need to operate your transistor in the saturation region and in that region it is supposed to carry the 100 micro ampere current what should be voltage you know mosfet operate in the multiple region triode region it operate in the you know basically saturation region so there are different condition v overdrive voltage vds set we call also it that should be greater than equal to vgs minus vth so these all condition if you remember then you will be in position to solve these all numerical the second question for the device in figure find the overdrive voltage vgs required to cause the device to operate as a 1000 ohm resistor for very small value of the vds if you might have seen you draw a characteristic of the id versus vds then for very small value of the vds you can treat it operating in the linear region or ohmic region there it behave as a resistor and that resistance value will be somewhere function of the gate to source voltage so if you know this entire characteristic theory only then you will be in position to use the third questions so that's why i have taken these question in that way if you practice these 16 to 80 question 18 question as a assignment 
then I am sure you will get a very good hold over how to execute the numerical of diode, MOSFET, BJT, op amp and other kind of the analog devices. Now coming down guys, you can see this question design a circuit shown in the figure. See when we talk about the design a circuit, it means you need to tell the value of the parameter. It is clearly mentioned here determine the value of RD and RS so that the transistor operate at diode drain current is 0.2 milliampere drain voltage is 0.2 volt the n mos transistor have threshold voltage 0.5 mu and cox 400 microampere per volt square and length is 0.5 micrometer and you can see neglect the channel length modulation effect see most of the question they are neglecting the channel length modulation but yes there are few questions I have taken which include the effect of the channel length modulation also. So there are different variety of questions. Conceptual questions are there, formula based questions are there, some lengthy calculation questions are there. That's why I try to make this one compact kind of assignment for you people. If you prepare this, trust me, you will be in position to solve the most of the analog question. So guys, now coming down for this also, you need to first assume that in which region this is operating, then accordingly you need to proceed ahead. Now this is a very good question. This is basically a combination of NMOS and PMOS. So he is saying the NMOS and PMOS in the given circuit are matched. And what is the condition of match in term of the you know BJT? We defined it in term of the beta and VB on. And when we talk about the MOSFET, we talk about it into in term of the mobility in term of the WYL ratio. Is it clear or KN you can say? So it's clearly mentioned KN dash WYL for N is equal to KP dash WYL for P and other parameters are given again lambda is equal to 0 for both devices means there is no channel length modulation taken into consideration find the drain current id on and idp as well as output voltage he is considering 3 voltage 0 volt 2.5 volt minus 2.5 volt it means see if you apply here 0 volt you need to see which will be on whether both are on you apply here a plus 5 volt obviously one will be on one will be off you apply here minus 5 volt one will be on other will be off so you need to solve this circuit for three different cases and trust me if you solve this circuit for three cases almost entire MOSFET question you can crack because all the questions are somewhere subset of these concepts only. You know there is an on condition for PMOS, there is an on condition for NMOS, your gate to source voltage for NMOS should be at least equal to threshold voltage or greater than equal to that. Threshold voltage for NMOS is positive, for PMOS we take in term of the mod, there are a lot of theories which I will be discussing in the class, right? So next question we have taken here, again the complementary of the MOSFET I have taken for the BJT and you can see in previous year, the same question is being asked, the only difference he made it grounded. So this question is straight away taken from the Sadra and Smith. See guys, most of the questions are directly taken from the textbook only. That's why I had made this assignment. Again, it includes NPN, it includes PNP. Now obviously you are adding here plus 5 volt, then under this, which one is on, NPN is on or PNP is on. Under one assumption, you need to start your calculation. You will be getting the node voltage and node current. You verify whatever assumption you did. Whatever answer you are getting, whether that is verified or not. If verified means they are your final answer. If not verified, you need to take otherwise assumption. So this question is also really good question. So practice these kind of questions. See, when multiple things are coming together, na, then obviously they will put you under pressure and they will take you the best out of you. Ultimately, when you are taking multiple things all together, only then you will be putting stress on your mind. And only then you will be revising all the things. Otherwise, what happens if you do a single single numerical, the same formula based numerical, then your revision will not be universally for the entire concept. You need to choose numerical in such a way that in numerical, in one numerical, multiple relations, multiple theories, multiple models are involved. Here both models are involved, NPN model and PNP model. So the only one student who knows what are the working conditions of NPN, what are the working conditions of PNP, he will be only in position to solve this question. There will be a class of student who will think that, okay, we don't know anything related to PNP and they will leave these questions. Now coming next, this question again related to the amplifier. You know, whenever we talk about the amplifier, we do the small signal analysis. So in this question, he is asking find the voltage gain. Again, I have told you first do the DC analysis. Make sure that its operating point is fixed in the active region. If it's done, calculate the small signal parameter R pi. 
you know, beta, RE, etc., whatever required GM transconductance, and then convert this transistor body simply, this collector, base, and emitter terminal with the pi model, R pi model, or RE model. You say T model or pi model. And then simply it is converted into a network problem. Once it's converted into a network problem, you need to find the output upon input ratio. That is the GAN itself. So guys, these kind of problem, if you practice, then you will be kind of revising the entire subject in one go. Now next coming, you can see a diode is biased at current of 1 milliampere. Means operating point is fixed. It's biased at 1 milliampere. Next question is asking, determine the change. In current, if VD diode voltage changes by 1 millivolt. Next question, determine the voltage change if diode current changes by 10%. You know, you might have studied one dynamic resistance. Whenever there is incremental change or voltage in current, then we talk about the dynamic resistance model of the diode that I will discuss separately. So this question is related to that. Now next question, you can see typical discrete bipolar transistor has large area. The area of one transistor is given this one. Whereas the modern integrated device may have an area, this one, assuming other device parameters are identical, determine the difference between the base emitter voltage of two such transistors for equal collector current. You know, IC is equal to IS, E raised to power VBE upon VT, IC collector current equal for both, VBE difference you need to calculate, VT will be same for both, all the parameters identical, obviously I as saturation current, scaling current, now you need to configure whether that is a function of area which is yes, then you need to exploit that property there. So guys that's what I told you, I have taken these questions in such a way that you can revise entire analog electronics through these questions. I am not saying this is a first set of the assignment, there will be multiple set like this, okay. Now next going, the collector and base of the bipolar transistor are tied together, collector and base. A two terminal device result, you can see one terminal this, other terminal this. Determine the small signal impedance of the device, again VA infinite, early voltage infinite means you need to neglect the base width modulation, you don't need to take the finite output resistance, again that is a very big concept. See in MOSFET channel length modulation, in BJT base width modulation, both have some significant contribution into the pi model, T model. What contribution that we will be discussing in the theory section, right? Next question you can see here, microphone is attached with the amplifier and then to speaker. And there are very few questions asked. Is it clear? So this is basically the journey given and the question asked are, what will be the coupling loss here and what will be the coupling loss here? If the input resistance values are different for the amplifier and output value are different for the amplifier. So this is a purely design based question. Now next question you can see common emitter stage is biased at a collector current of 1 milliampere. Means he is talking about the common emitter stage. If the circuit provide a voltage gain of 20 with no emitter degeneration. Means when no emitter resistance, no RE is connected in common emitter then the gain is 20 and by that 1 milliampere, you know common emitter gain is minus GMRC without RE. With RE, there will be negative feedback minus GMRC upon 1 plus GMRE. He is saying, you know, determine RC, RE and input output impedances, assume beta is equal to 100. So now what he is doing, he is not asking you to design the common emitter. He is asking you that, he is under, he is assuming that you know what are the parameters of common emitter without RE, common emitter with RE. If you remember those relations, then only you will be in position to solve this question. That's why many times students ask me, sir, do we actually remember the relation? See, I will not say remember the relation, but if you want to save the time, then better if you know the relation, you can directly start doing. But since this is a conventional exam, descriptive exam, you can take one small derivation for without RE and with RE. Obviously, if you remember the result, it will be easy for you people to do the cross verification that whether you are doing right or wrong. Is it clear or not? Next question, a common base stage. Now, next question is related to common base. Common base stage is designed to amplify an RF signal received by a 50 ohm antenna. Determine the required bias current if the input impedance of the amplifier must match the impedance of the antenna. What is the voltage gain if common base stage also drive a 50 ohm load? See, at load 50 ohm is connected, common base configuration used, at the source we are using the antenna. And the antenna can be modeled as a, uh, you know, Thevenin equivalent of the voltage source. Voltage source will be input voltage and impedance is given as how much I guess? This one, 50 ohm. 
So now make a circuit, you know, convert common base into small signal model and simply solve the circuit. You will be getting the answer. So guys, that is why these questions are taken for the practice. Okay. Next going ahead. See, calculate the bias current of M1, this transistor, as you mu and Cux is equal to 100 microampere per volt square and VTH is equal to 0.4 volt. If the gate voltage increases by 10 millivolt, this voltage increases by 10 millivolt, then what will be change in the drain voltage? See, he is increasing the voltage at input end and asking the change at the output end. Whatever answer you will be good in getting in by making the assumption, then calculating and verifying. Then one conclusion I will say check whether the change in output divided by change in input is greater than 1 or not. If 1, then it's a buffer. If greater than 1, obviously it's an amplifier. So like this, he can engage the question in multiple direction. Next, a MOSFET carries a drain current of 1 milliampere with VDS is equal to 0.5 in the saturation. Determine the change in ID if VDS rises to 1 volt and lambda is equal to 0.1 volt inverse. See, wherever lambda is mentioned, be it BJT, be it MOSFET, means you need to consider the finite output resistance concept into picture. There is a channel length modulation in the MOSFET, base width modulation in the BJT. So what are the different relations, how to conclude that all I will discuss in the theoretical section. Now next, a non-inverting amplifier incorporate an op-amp having a gain of 1000. Determine the gain error if the circuit is to provide a nominal gain of 5 and 50. So guys, obviously you solve most of the numerical under the idle condition, virtual ground condition. But they are giving some finite gain condition here and you need to calculate the percentage error. So that is again a simple analysis. Now coming down next, plot the output waveform for the circuit shown assuming the idle open means virtual ground concept you are using here. Now you need to see this pulse we are giving. Now you can check whether it's an integrator, whether it's a differentiator because whenever there will be capacitor in the input or feedback path, it can be in that integrator or differentiator. So if you don't remember actually whether it's a differentiator or integrator, you can operate the circuit, you can calculate the output input relation and this question can be solved in network way, this can be solved in the mathematical way. Okay, how? You can see at T is equal to 0, voltage is changing suddenly here. Capacitor does not allow the sudden change current. It allows the sudden change current only under one condition when there will be impulse, infinite current. You see if this is a differentiator, the differentiation of this will be impulse. Both are in the synchronism or correlation. There are two way of answers. So guys, that is why I have taken the question in such a way when I'm teaching this question, I can also deliver a theoretical aspect also altogether. Now coming next, a non-unverting amplifier incorporate an op-amp having an op-amp gain of 100 and bandwidth of 1 megahertz if the circuit is designed for a closed loop gain of 16 determine the resulting bandwidth and the time constant see you might have heard one concept that gain bandwidth product is constant first draw it for the open loop then calculate using the same logic for the closed loop you know in closed loop gain will be a naught upon 1 plus a naught beta a naught is the open loop gain beta is the feedback factor accordingly use the relation but how to solve conventionally that we will discuss so guys these were the question basically i have taken for assignment number one for the analog electronics if you want to genuinely practice that good kind of question go for the standard book i always solve the standard book question only in the classroom also so these i have taken from those book also be it sadran smith be it bedad rizabi be it sergio franco or be it some donald neiman etc right so if you practice the lesser number of questions, even a good question, which involve a lot of concept together, then your revision will be much better as compared to solving a simple, simple kind of question. I, I will not say simple and difficult. I mean a one concept question. One concept question are good also. Many questions are asked. But when you are doing a rehearsal, when you are doing a practice, so the kind of information, the kind of revision, the kind of stress your mind will be taking so that you can put, you know, some way on your mind to recall more and more formula and make more and more relation all together on a single copy down. And that notebook will help you before the just revision before a final exam. So guys, prepare these stuff accordingly and I guess this PDF will be available on the website of the Yourpedia Education. You can download it from there alongside the solution we will also provide there. So I wish you all the best and classes are going for this, you know, gadgeted officer exam, especially for the descriptive and I guess control and network we have started with. So very soon the analog and signal, these all classes will be starting. Thanks a lot guys.